Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It is Tuesday, January 28th. Thanks for being with us this morning. Hopefully you survived your morning commute if you had to get out this morning and all that rain. Yeah, some of the drive times are ridiculous this morning. Highway 46 up in Bernie yeah. towards 1604, one hour <gasps> inbound at one point. Tons of accidents this morning because of those slick roads. Please be careful if you are going to head out. Well, it's that time of year where people start thinking about vacations. I did not know that today is actually National Plan Your Vacation Day. It is, and we are here to help. We found an article in the Chicago Tribune. All right, so we need to be inspired today, and we actually need to do something about it because Americans, as we've reported before in this newscast, uh, we let more than 768 million vacation days go unused in 2018. That was up almost 10% from the year before. This is from the U.S. Travel Association. It's an industry group, and they want to stop fretting away our hard-earned days off and start taking more trips. So they have a suggestion of how you can plan your perfect vacation. All right, what you do is, if possible, you go up to the Chicago Travel and Adventure Show taking place February 8th through 9th at the uh, Stevens Convention Center. And that is in Rosemont. Where is that? Where is Rosemont? Illinois. In Chicago Illinois. area. Yep. It's in the Chicago area. Okay. Yeah. So it's the Chicago Travel and Adventure Show. And here's what you, why it's a good idea to do it. Take a vacation and plan your vacation. Because it's a one-stop shop to learn about loads of vacation destinations, cruise lines, safari companies, tour operators, all going to be there to show you what you can get. If you're lucky enough to go, celebrity speakers include Rick Steves, Pauline Fromer, Josh Gates, host of Discovery Channel's Expedition Unknown. They will have um, Savile, Savvy Rather Travel Theater giving tips on everything from how to pack your luggage and maximize your reward points and how to travel cheaper and safer. TSA will be on hand to share information about real ID. That's the driver's license and ID cards that will be required to fly within our country as of October 1st. And they will also assist with enrollment for TSA pre-check, the time saver. If you haven't TSA pre-checked, you probably should do it. It really makes navigating the airports a lot easier. And it's open to the public 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. February 8th, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. February 9th. Uh, you can get same day purchases or you can buy the tickets in advance, but go learn out what's out there for your next vacation. Plan your vacation day. And this is a huge article, but just a couple of things like there's that big field of dreams game this year yep. at the ballpark in Iowa, a major league baseball game across the pond in London. And also uh, Branson, Missouri is getting a huge new aquarium, like something like a 50,000 square foot aquarium. So those are ideas of things you can do for your vacation. So there you go. Hopefully you have one planned for your family and you use your vacation days. Let's take a look at your GMSA rundown. In a fight to the finish, Trump's team preparing to wrap up opening arguments today. Trump's attorneys addressed the explosive allegations made by former National Security Advisor John Bolton. A draft of his upcoming book, Bolton says the president personally tied military aid to the Ukraine. China says it's sparing no effort to curb the Wuhan coronavirus. That includes putting partial or full lockdowns into effect. There are more than 4,500 confirmed cases in China with dozens of deaths. And the Trump administration has scored a victory in its effort to place new restrictions on legal immigration. The Supreme Court has cleared the way for the government to deny green cards to immigrants if they sign up for public assistance like food stamps or Medicaid. Police are on the scene of a burglary at a drugstore. This is the door where the burglars actually apparently got into the building. The police say once they were in there, they then tunneled a hole into the pharmacy, which is over on this side of the building. From New York City, pedestrians raced over to help a woman trapped beneath that SUV. She'd just been hit and was lying in the street. About a dozen Good Samaritans rocked the vehicle back and forth to set her free. And more meetings are planned this week to address the city of San Antonio's homeless strategic plan. The city and the firm home base are trying to gather input from each pocket of the community to find a way to solve the homeless epidemic. Planners are reportedly rethinking its plans to kill off its Mr. Peanut mascot in the wake of Kobe Bryant's death. The company said in a statement it's paused all campaign activities. A deputy pulled over the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile for not moving over <laughs> while passing an emergency vehicle. The driver got a warning. More than 1.5 million people have signed an online petition asking the league to change its silhouette from legendary player Jerry West to Kobe Bryant. How about a quick game of Uno? That's what these guys did at a red light near Fort Myers, Florida. They're protesting the long wait times in traffic. <laughs> 
Well, they're going to be scrambling when the light turns green. I was going to say, that's one way to do it. Uno, now get back in your car and go. go. Yeah. Did you used to do the thing where you'd run out and the red lights and everybody would change? Yes, you did. Not that I recall. Some other shenanigans may have taken place in Georgetown in Washington, really? but I don't remember that one. We used to. We'd get in a red light and we'd just run around and switch places. Yeah. And everybody would be like, what are they doing? Not some good old days in Louisiana, right? Well, yeah, all male fan, you better believe it. Oh, watch your language. <laughs> Outside with live cam, the, we've already talked about the nasty road conditions out there. We had some much needed rainfall this morning. Was it kind of an all at once thing out at the airport, Justin? It was. We, we picked up 35 hundredths of an inch of rain. So that's good. We, we're above average now for the month of January. It, we'll take all the rain, but in its wake, we're getting some fog. The fog is pretty thick here in San Antonio right now. Temperature wise, not so bad. We're at 57 degrees here in town, 51 Kerrville, 52 Rock Springs. But notice the dew point and temperature close together there. That's uh, creating some of that fog, especially with the light winds that we have in place. So let's take a look at that. Uh, first, the radar showers moving out. They're moving towards Houston. They're moving away. We're done with the rain. But look at the visible satellite picture, and you can actually pick up on where some of that low cloudiness and fog is. It drew it out for you right there along I-35. So we've got a little more time before this goes away. Visibility down about a quarter of a mile at the airport. Two and a half miles of Port SA, and about three quarters of a mile at Randolph. So take it slow out there. Forecast calls for high right around 70 this afternoon. We will see sun, but gusty winds out of the northwest at 15 to 25. And look for those winds to stay gusty overnight before we get some more changes by the middle part of the week and some rain chances by Thursday and some cooler temperatures too. We're going to talk all about that coming up in just a few minutes. Guys. 904 right now and things are looking uh, pretty good right now. Slow traffic 281 at Grayson though. Don't have a cause for that and still some uh, low clouds out there. Perhaps some leftover fog that was 410 at Cherry Ridge as we scan through cameras and now you're on the northwest side. New this morning at 9, a 68-year-old woman is dead after Converse police say she crashed her car into a pole. It happened around 5.30 this morning at the intersection of Topperwine and Kitty Hawk Roads. Police tell us the woman suffered some kind of medical issue which caused her to veer off the roadway and hit that pole. She was pronounced dead at the scene. Right now, we are still waiting to learn her name. Other top stories we're following today. An anonymous tip leads to the arrest of a man wanted for breaking into a liquor store three different times. Crime Stoppers first asked the public for help identifying the suspect back in August. After receiving an anonymous tip, the Bear County Sheriff's Office arrested Troy Williams. He's accused of breaking into Gabriel's liquor store in the 4400 block of Walsham Road on three separate occasions over the summer and taking several bottles of alcohol. Williams now facing burglary charges and moving on to your morning headlines. We are learning more about the other victims who were killed alongside Kobe Bryant in that helicopter crash and this date marks a tragic moment in the US space program. David Sears is here with more on that. Hi, David Good morning got all that for you. We're going to end with an uplifting story this morning. Good. We need we some uplifting stories. We'll have that for you. But first we're going to start with the some new information about those tragedies that happened over the weekend. First, while family, friends, and fans around the world still mourn the death of Kobe Bryant and his daughter, Gianna, there are also several other families in mourning as well. There were a total of five parents and three teenagers on that helicopter that crashed on that mountainside on their way to a basketball game. Gianna's teammate, Alyssa, and her parents, Carrie and John Altabelli. John was a baseball coach at Orange Coast College. Another teammate, Peyton Chester and her mom, Sarah, also on the flight, and Christina Maser, the team's assistant coach. She was handpicked by Kobe to help teach his team defense. The pilot, Era Zobayan, also killed. We are also being told that Kobe was a devout Catholic and actually attended mass Sunday morning before boarding that helicopter. We also know that during the flight, right before the crash, the air traffic controller radioed the helicopter pilot to tell him he was too low to be picked up on radar. The NTSB said that it could take at least weeks, if not months, before an exact cause of that crash is known. And more tragedy over the weekend, this time in Alabama, along the Tennessee River, you're looking at massive flames taking over a dock at the Jackson County Park in Scottsboro, Alabama. At least eight people were killed, seven others injured, and 35 boats destroyed. Some of those boats were pontoon boats and even houseboats that were actually permanent residents, and that was making it hard to identify victims. Firefighters had a hard time getting to the fire itself and then trying to find victims in the water with all that debris. Primary objective remains to check every boat, every vessel, everything we can check to ensure that we've accounted for all the victims. And that's where they are at this point. They're checking all those boats and trying to remove them from the water to make sure there are no more victims. 
And today also marks a catastrophic day in U.S. space travel history. On this day, back in 1986, the space shuttle Challenger exploded 73 seconds after liftoff from Cape Canaveral. All seven crew members on board were killed and included the first teacher that was headed to space, Krista McAuliffe from New Hampshire. The investigation in that crash included that the cold temperatures that morning of the flight caused the O-rings to harden and there was a leak in a right booster that ultimately caused an explosion. The shuttle program was grounded. It was three years before another shuttle actually ever took off. And finally this morning, something uplifting. Yes, uplifting. This is nine-year-old Tate Fegley. Tate's claim to fame, he can lift 230 pounds. Did I say he was nine? He works out every morning. He's got a trainer. He benches 92 pounds, squats 190 pounds, and then he deadlifts 230 pounds. He's broken seven records, three in one day. I just loved watching, just watching them work out and lifting the weights. He works ridiculously hard, and it's very motivating to see. And I think that's 99% of his progress is how hard this young man works. Aww. He is headed to Florida for a shot at a national championship. I'd be breaking bones. That's what I'd be breaking. <laughs> well, I remember work. when I was a kid, they all, there was always this controversy of how much weightlifting you actually wanted to do at his age and even up to you got to be, you know, an older teenager because of the development of your muscles and, and whatnot. But apparently. Well, he's yeah. got a trainer, so he's they're making like sure he's doing it right, I guess. Developing early. Wow, he is really putting in the work. Future yeah. Green Beret or something <laughs> waiting to happen there, right? You work out. Can you? Can you do 230 pounds? I know. That'd be, that, that would be a big fat no. Give her six weeks. Yeah. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. a challenge right there. Yeah, that Thank sure you. is. Woo. Thank you, David. 909, <laughs> 57 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. An Indiana artist is using a kid's toy as her canvas. How he's able to create beautiful works of art on an Etch-a-Sketch. Airport's a major concern when it comes to human and sex trafficking. Now San Antonio International Airport taking part in a campaign to identify survivors and stop those traffickers. Courtney Friedman did the story and she's here to debrief it for us later in the newscast. With so many candidates still in the race for president, how do you decide who to vote for? Max Massey will join us after the break to tell us where the top candidates stand on the big issues. It's a wild day with the world markets yesterday, but we are in the green right now. Positive territory of the Dow Jones Industrial Average is up about 126 points, 28,662. It's about 914, the clock definitely ticking. We're only five weeks away from the Texas primary election. There are so many Democratic presidential candidates still in the race, it might be tough to distinguish where candidates stand on issues that are important to you. But now on KSAT.com, we have an article breaking down some of the basics. That's right. Max Massey joins us in studio. Max, walk us through it. Good morning, guys. So the campaigning, the debates, and the impromptu interviews, these candidates, they say a lot. Sometimes it's easy to get lost in the weeds. So a couple weeks ago, we decided we should break down the basics. So let's start off with who technically is still in the race for that Democratic nod. A total of 12 candidates. Colorado Senator Michael Bennett, former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg, former Vice President Joe Biden, former South Bend, Indiana Mayor Pete Buttigieg, former Maryland Rep John Delaney, Hawaii Rep Tulsi Gabbard, Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar, former Massachusetts Governor Deval Patrick, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders, billionaire Tom Steyer, Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren, and businessman Andrew Yang. Yes, that is a lot and a lot to say. So let's break down some of the actual issues. When it comes to taxes, most of the candidates agree on raising the capital gains tax and raising corporate taxes. But there are differences of opinion on how corporate taxes should be raised. Biden, Klobuchar, and Delaney want to raise corporate taxes but keep them lower than they were before 2017. Warren, on the other hand, wants to raise taxes on some corporations beyond that 2017 rate. Buttigieg wants to reverse the corporate tax cut of 2017. And Andrew Yang, businessman, wants to create a value-added tax where products are taxed when value is added. Sanders and Gabbard want to eliminate tax breaks for offshoring when companies shift their base to another country, leaving the U.S., all in an effort to pay lower taxes than they would here in the United States. All right, guys, next up, the hot button issue of health care. The big issue is Medicare for All, a proposal that would move the country into a single payer health care system, all funded by the federal government. Instead of what we have, a multiple group system paid by health insurance companies, employers, and the government. Some experts have said that it could cost more than $30 trillion over a 10 year span. Sanders and Warren, two of the candidates that are 100% in favor of Medicare for All. 
Gabbard also supports Medicare for all, but she wants to take more gradual steps toward that end goal, doing so by offering cheaper options to more people. All of the other candidates oppose Medicare for all, and they want to offer people a chance to make their own decisions on whether they want private insurance or a government plan. Next up, a topic close to home, spending on the military. Gabbard, Globachar, Sanders, Warren, and Yang all in favor of cutting the budget for the military. On the other side, Biden, Buttigieg, and Bennett want to increase defense spending. But what about deployment? Well, Buttigieg, Delaney, Gabbard, Sanders, and Warren all in favor of bringing troops home, while Biden, Bennett, Klobuchar, and Yang in favor of keeping troops deployed. Now, that was a lot. We just showed you a lot of information, a lot of names on your screen. That's because there are still so many candidates. But if you have any questions, we have an easy breakdown right now on KSAT.com. Along with what I mentioned, we also have topics like college costs, student loan debt, and minimum wage, and they're all broken down. Just a reminder, the deadline to register to vote in the primary is Monday. So if you have plans to do so, better do it soon. Mark, Leslie? Yeah, that's a lot of information. Yeah, Thank is. you, Max. I think we're ready for a pop quiz, though, Max. So bring it all day every day okay <laughs> all right all right good job pop quiz that's scary i know right uh, but the three of us together yeah we could probably we do. Might answer one question to muster a collectively passing grade maybe maybe <laughs> uh well the rain last night uh or we'll this give morning it, well yes this morning we'll give it an a plus it was it was welcome rain it wasn't severe but we did get some lightning and thunder it was a little loud last night woke mm -hmm. me up uh and we got some decent rain let's take a look at the numbers uh here in san antonio about 35 hundredths of an inch up there in Kerrville, over half an inch. Bandera, about half an inch. And I will say, if you're south of Highway 90, south of Bear County, you didn't get any rain, which is unfortunate. Most of it stayed north of that line. Uh, New Braunfels, about a quarter of an inch. Same story in Seguin. So not huge numbers, but we'll take it. We've got some more chances of rain down the line. Let's check in with uh, San Antonio for the month. We're actually above average, about three tenths above average. But if you factor in De December, we're still a little bit below average. And they're looking at the radar, all this rain is moving out. We're seeing these showers and storms move towards Houston. So if you're traveling along I-10, you will run into some rain, but it's moving away from us. And uh, as we look at the, the fog, that really is the issue now. Behind the rain, we're seeing visibility drop quite a bit, down to about a quarter of a mile here in San Antonio, down to about a mile at Randolph. And uh, as we look at some of the Transkai cameras, looks like some improvement there at I-10 and Frio. Also at uh, I-10 and Loop 1604. So perhaps we're seeing things get a little bit better. And I think over time, probably next hour or so, we'll see these uh, visibility numbers improve. Here's the time lapse. You can kind of see that fog thickening up there a little bit earlier this morning. 57 degrees at the airport right now. Dew point is at 55 when we got light winds. That is going to change. We'll get a frontal boundary through here today. And so uh, the winds are going to pick up quite a bit as we get into the afternoon. Satellite picture, you can actually see where the fog is. Some of those little clouds and fog stretching right along I-35. Temperatures in the 50s for the most part. 57, Gonzales, 59 in Kennedy, 52 right now in Rock Springs, and up to 60 in Castroville, 57, as we mentioned, at the airport. We are starting to see some sun, it looks like, up there in Bandera County up towards uh, Bernie. High temperatures today, close to 70. A little cooler in the hill country because we do have that front coming through. With that front, we'll see some pretty stout wind gusts. I think we could gust up to 20, 25, maybe, maybe even up to 30 later today. So be prepared for some windy conditions. So windy, in fact, there is a wind advisory out for our western counties where winds could gust up to 40 miles per hour. And that is because of this front here that's going to be swinging through. That will pick up the winds. It will also cool us down tomorrow as we will be on the back side of this system. But you can see uh, the rain out ahead of it and the snow on the back side. And Futurecast shows this system basically moving away here. And here comes our next one. So by Thursday, clouds come back. Here come the rain chances again. We'll see some light rain on Thursday. And uh, that will linger over into Friday before we clear out a little bit over the weekend. 70 degrees today, breezy. Northwesterly winds 15 to 25 at times. And then uh, tomorrow, 63, cooler and sunny. We start off at 40. Then a 40% chance of rain Thursday, 20% chance Friday morning. Over the weekend, we will see some increasing clouds, uh, but still nice nonetheless. Mid-60s with another chance of rain next week. Wednesday looks beautiful. Wednesday will be nice. Hopefully the, the wind calms down a little bit. Yeah. All right, thanks. Mm -hmm. Still ahead on Team S89, an artist in Indiana creating masterpieces with simple kids' toys. You don't want to miss the story of this Etch-A-Sketch artist. Next.
It is the well-known child's toy for the budding artist in all of us, the Etch-a-Sketch. <laughs> That's so true. Well, many of us spent hours just trying to use it to draw simple shapes, and Indiana artist is using it to draw astonishing reactions from customers. Chris Sutter from WDRB in Louisville, Kentucky explains. Carrie Johns is that chill artist. <laughs> find most days quietly humming her favorite tune. I don't really like to be the center of attention too much. And creating in her Floyd's Knob studio surrounded by her impressive work. I have a lot of anxiety and so um, artwork kind of keeps me grounded and helps me breathe a little bit. Adulting is a little bit hard sometimes. So she's taken the adulting out of all of this. I would definitely think of myself as a big kid. Her favorite medium has nothing to do with paint or a brush. A child's toy is what she's using for a canvas. You'll remember it well. Say yes, draw. Go! Oh! The good old Etch-a-Sketch. Her work though is far from child's play. Like most of us, John started trying her hand at this when she was just a kid. Just practice and practice and practice. It didn't take long for her to get good. I'm like, anyone who can do that on an Etch-a-Sketch, I mean, I can't even make a box. Now she can crank out a small Etch-a-Sketch piece of art in an hour or two, faster than Buddy the Elf can make them. I made uh, 85. Just about everything you can think of, I've drawn. The Coliseum, the greatest, this Louisville lady's first home. Wow, I mean, that's really a wow piece. Even some local newsman. <laughs> this is the ugliest Etch-a-Sketch you've ever done? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> when there are mistakes, she has no choice but to draw her way out of it or flip the Etch-a-Sketch over and start again. Well, there's been many times where I've had to erase something. Believe it or not, there's part of this process that's tougher than the image itself, keeping the finished product intact for paying customers. The best way to do it is just to cut the whole thing open and um, dump out all of the powder. The drawing mechanisms have to go too. John's goes all Tim the Tool Man Taylor. <laughs> with a saw to get it open. You really have to be patient with it, so it kind of makes you slow down a little bit. Every twist and turn of these knobs may be the respite John's needs from a busy life, but her work is the flashback to a simpler time in childhood we could all use. OSWDRB's Chris Sutter reporting. Here's a little background on Etch-a-Sketch for you, and I didn't know any of this. A flint French electrical technician actually invented it. All right, so according to the Toy Hall of Fame, it uses static charges to hold a mixture of aluminum powder and tiny plastic beads to the inside of a clear plastic screen. The technician originally named the toy the Magic Screen. Magic Screen. So it wasn't Buddy the Elf and his buddies up mm -hmm. in the North Pole. Shh. Maybe we shouldn't have told everybody that. About the Etch-a-Sketch secret? Mm -hmm. That's perhaps. It's now out of the bag. 927, 57 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. It's not the outcome the Spurs fans were looking for. Again, the silver and black falling just one point short last night against the Bulls. Dave, David and RJ are here to break down what went wrong. And it's a campaign to educate people on how to identify and help uh, prevent human and sex trafficking. San Antonio International Airport. Soon a part of that program, Courtney Friedman is here in the studio with a debrief on the DHS Blue campaign that is next. Welcome back to Time Now 930. Highways, buses, trains, and planes. They're all used as modes of transportation for human and sex traffickers. Airports are a major concern, which is why San Antonio International Airport just signed on to a new partnership with the Department of Homeland Security. Courtney Friedman found out more about this campaign to identify survivors and stop traffickers. Here's a clip from her story. Sex trafficking victims have told me that public restrooms are one of the only places they can go to get away from their trafficker for a point in time. That's why the San Antonio airport will soon have these cards in all of the bathrooms. They list a lot of resources, but a victim can also take one of these, quietly go up to any staff member in the airport, and that staff is already trained to alert the right people. It also works the other way. Airport staff or members of the public can pass that card to someone they think may be in trouble. Okay. This is fantastic. Yes. Courtney joins us now to talk more about this. All right. First of all, uh, training is a main part of this yes. whole partnership. So tell us about the training. So the training, not only the airlines actually already do their own training, but this is kind of bridging the two. So D DHS will help the airport train all of its staff, and that includes vendors. So if you go 
eat at a restaurant there or go to a shop, everyone will be trained uh, to identify red flags of sex trafficking um, in the airport. So these are some of the red flags and I really encourage everyone to go take a look at them because anyone can be and helpful. Pay attention. pay attention. It's things that might not seem obvious, but does the person look disheveled? Do they look hungry, tired? Do they look nervous traveling? Are they traveling with someone who seems to be in control of them, in control of their every move? Um, did, did they look scared of that person? Um, is that travel partner the one handling all the documents? Mm -hmm. So that person doesn't have control over their own travel document. Oh, a and a lot of the, uh, the most obvious ones, does the person know the address on their ID? A lot of times if there's a suspected trafficking situation, TSA can say, you know, where do you live? Where are you going? And a lot of times they can't answer that question. How many airports are participating? I assume San Antonio is one of uh, several. Yeah, so we're actually only the fourth in the country, which okay. is a huge deal. It means that we're getting out ahead of this. Yeah. So, you know, I've been doing a lot of trafficking stories lately. So it's really great to hear that our city is making such a big effort in, in that uh, arena. So you have the cards in your hand. Can yes, I see one of them? So I do. When Here's will they be available? Um, so these, you can see these cards right here. They've got, I showed you these in the story, mm -hmm. but uh, they have the um, number for DHS. They have a number to call to report trafficking. Right. And then they have a number to call if you are uh, a victim. And so you can see these break off in different ways. Say, it's like three in one. Yeah, yeah. And you can take, so you can basically, like I showed you in the bathroom, you can take the entire card. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't, if you're with your trafficker, it's hard to get away from them. It's the same thing I talk about with domestic violence. They're with you all the time. So you can take this and quietly just pass it Discreet. to a staff member and yeah. everyone will be trained. One of them almost looks like a key fob, so you have yeah. that number yeah. handy, right? Yeah. Uh, big picture takeaway. Obviously, trafficking is happening here, probably more than anyone would ever imagine. Yes, and that's why, I mean, this this has opened my eyes being, you know, becoming an expert in this. I've done a lot of stories lately, and um, it's happening in our backyards, and it's not just happening, you know, to, to kids who are homeless, and they're doing, they're, tr they're talking to people online. These people act like they're your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Right. Um, so uh, this has happened twice at the airport that they have thwarted a trafficker's effort to uh, smuggle someone, whether it's human trafficking or sex trafficking, across state lines. So look for the cards and pay attention yes. to your surroundings and what's yes. happening. In San Antonio, part of the Blue Campaign. DHS.gov slash Blue Campaign. Yep. We have a lot more information, I'm yep. sure, on our website. Take too. a look at the story. There's so much information on there. Uh, Thank you so much. Wow. Thanks, guys. Really good. Let's go outside with live cam, see how things are looking out there on a rather murky Tuesday. And if you thought we were done with the colder air around here, Justin says, ah, not so fast. Yeah, we're going to have another sort of shot of some cooler air by midweek. I think you'll feel the difference probably uh, Wednesday into th Thursday into Friday, I should say. Uh, today, though, we had to deal with some thunderstorms a little bit earlier this morning. Those have moved away. Now we've got some fog in the, in the wake of those showers and storms. Let's take a look at the radar, and you'll see that most of the rain is now moving towards Houston and away from us. Uh, but we still do have some of those low clouds and fog holding on. And we can see that on visible satellite kind of lining up there along I-35. It'll take some time for that to go away and some of that fog to dissipate. We'll see visibility start to come up. We're starting to see some improvements here, but visibility is down to about a quarter of a mile at the airport still. Uh, forecast for today, we'll get rid of the fog and clouds by midday and then up to around 70 with sunny skies. One thing you will notice, though, this afternoon, gusty winds. Northwesterly winds 15 to 25. They could gust a little bit higher than that. And then again, some more changes by the uh, end of the week. We're going to talk more about that coming up in just a couple minutes. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Right now, looks like we've got a stalled vehicle out there. Uh, we went right past it before I could tell you which camera that was. There's 10 at Callahan and 10 at Frio. We'll try to circle back and look at that one. Do you remember I told you that uh, over the weekend I watched the movie Ad Astra? Yes, was, with Brad Pitt. Yeah, and it's about the future. Right. And traveling to the moon is just normal. It's just part of you hop on a rocket ship and you pay your price and you go to the moon. Yes. Well, there's an, an astronaut, a former astronaut, who says that is really going to happen. It is. Uh, former astronaut Stephen Lee from Phoenix, Arizona, mm -hmm. uh, claimed that in decades to come, space tourism will be as common as traveling by airplane. He said, yeah, it's going to be a normal thing that people do. You vacation to the moon the same way you do to other continents right now. And if you've seen the movie, you, as you watch it, I was like, 
I could totally see this being the future, so it makes sense. He said he thinks they're very close to multiple spaceships flying. Sir Richard Branson hopes to fly this year. That's right. He admitted that similar to early airline travel, which had its first commercial flight in 1914, the price range will be primarily too high for the majority of people, but will soon decrease as space travel becomes commonplace. And it does make sense. It says airline travel was dangerous at the beginning. Only a few select people could afford it. But just like airline travel, space travel will be very common one day. All right. So where are we at on a timeline with things? NASA is set to send the first woman and next man to the surface of the moon by 2024 in the Artemis mission with plans for additional lunar missions once a year thereafter and human exploration of Mars set for sometime in the mid 2030s. He did say it's a huge day when a woman finally sets foot on the moon. Of course it will be and said the future big missions and space missions that just is what's happening in the future we do have a space force now right we do so one day you're going to be able to go to expedia.com or any of those travel websites and be like do you want to go to cruise do you want to go on a land do you want to go want to go to the moon do you want to go to the moon to the moon to the moon and beyond mm -hmm. 937 57 degrees you're watching gmsa at nine the spurs were close so close the silver and black though fell to the bulls by one point david and rj are here to break it down next 941, not sure if we've used it yet, but the soapbox is ready to go for this new year, 2020. I need it. This might be the game that... Uh, I don't know if I want to stand next to, to David right so, now. So you know how you sit around and the Spurs will be playing and they get the lead, they lose the lead, they get the lead, and then five minutes are left and you go, okay, how are they going to win this? Nowadays it's... How are they going to blow this? Yeah. And they managed to find a way to blow it. So they All did right. it again last night. Now when, when did it start blow. falling apart? When, uh, when yeah. they stepped well, on the court? Yeah. <laughs> Chicago, wow. Uh, Spurs in Chicago uh, taking on the Bulls, another losing team in the Eastern yeah. Conference. And uh, once again, Spurs came out pretty good early on. Nola Marcus Aldridge in this game, so DeMar DeRozan kind of uh, took care of some business early. Yeah, okay. Yeah, sure. Okay, Are you gonna, that play's in there, right? There's a play at the yes. end of the first half. It's coming. Don't it's coming. Okay, look at this. They got that thing. What is my pet peeve? What's one of my pet peeves? Here it is. Inbounding. Inbounding. Why, look at that. Look at that. There's like five seconds left in the game, and they inbound it to the guy on the court who can't dribble. So why would you do that? Where are the guards that are on the floor? I think we need the soapbox. They just, I just, it just drives me. Yeah, it's nuts. time. It's yeah. time. Um, and right. I didn't even, I, did, I didn't even, I wasn't even there alone. I was screaming at the TV at home, and me and Sean were screaming about the same thing because he was wondering where the guards oh, were too. Oh boy, you're up yeah. on so it. So I just, I don't understand. It's like you guys have been playing basketball all your lives. Why yeah. do you throw it to the guy who can't dribble? Yeah. Who's guarded by a guy who can well, steal it from him? Why Nothing is there a guy who can't dribble prove. playing basketball? Well, because well, he's seven foot and he's just not, he's not built. Ask Justin if he can dribble. He's six foot four. He plays down Justin, low. can you dribble? Because post guys aren't no, dribblers dribble. down the floor. They won't let you he dribble either. See, he can't dribble. So, but you don't, you got three guards on the floor. That's what they're paid to do is dribble it's the ball dribble. And, and set people up. Not, not. Yeah. And that's what Sean Elliott, even during the broadcast, uh, you don't really see Sean go after a lot of the players at all. And he said that that was a huge mistake by the guards there. And we saw that those two points ended up Coming back to haunt the Spurs, I mean, they end up uh, yeah. tying this game. It's 108 late. The uh, Bulls get a couple of free throws there in the fourth quarter. And then DeMar goes to the line, and he uh, makes his first one, misses his second one, and but, three straight losses. But like I said, you sit there <laughs> and you go, okay, how are they going to blow this? Well, they, yeah. down the stretch, they get the lead back. They, they were up 94 to 89. And next thing you know, they're down like eight or ten. You go, what happened? It's like been only like three or four minutes, and then you turn around and they get the lead back, right. and then they go down and they turn it over, mm -hmm. and then they take a bad shot, and then the other guy, and then they don't play defense. It's like for the last three minutes of a game, they forget what defense is because guys are hitting threes out there standing there by themselves. Like this isn't practice, fellas. Come on. Here's what really stinks: <laughs> a guy like Demar scores 36. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. Okay. That, because I mean, without Demar, they're not even in this game. You have uh, Dejounte Murray, two points, unexcusable Ouch. yesterday. With no LaMarcus Aldridge in the game, that's a game that DeJounte Murray has to step up. Bryn Forbes, two points also. Um, I mean, Derek White had zero points, played good defense down the stretch, but I mean, come on, between Did those we hear three from guys. Uh, well, <laughs> we've heard from him. We basically uh -huh. say, say the same yeah. thing he's always been saying. Well, yeah, let's hear some pop. But, all right. Not very consistent. You know, we, we'll get leads and we'll lose them. Uh, just making some, you know, basic errors. Either lack of movement on offense or uh, gross mistakes defensively. So we're just not a very consistent uh, team. 
not just mistakes, gross, gross mistakes. Yeah. mistakes and real defense. quick, happy birthday to Pa. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully he's having a nice bottle of wine. And That's good, yeah. Happy celebrating birthday. together. Enjoy a nice bottle of wine. I know yeah. these guys are struggling. <laughs> they're having a rough year. Right, so what does this mean for the playoff stuff? What, what does this mean? Well, they're two games out of the eighth playoff spot. Mm -hmm. It means okay. right now they're going the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. They're we supposed need to be moving up the standings. And yeah. Moving down. Two games out, obviously the three games, all three games are winnable games, and then they get Utah here on Wednesday, and then another game before the Rodeo Road Charlotte. Trip, which is, uh, that, that's going to be a brutal trip, and we were saying earlier, that may break the spur. Okay. If they don't turn this thing around now. literally now, right. then we may. Because the Rodeo Road Trip includes the Lakers, the Clippers, the Jazz, the Blazers, twice against Oklahoma City, oh, wow. and a couple other games in there. There's like eight games. I mean, that's just, you know, it's brutal. I mean, they got to get a little more consistent. Other than losing games, is it youthful inexperience that's killing them at this point? I, you know, that's a good question. There's some youth out there that might be killing them, but then there's some veterans yeah, out there. Yeah, you have some that, veterans you know, yeah. out there. Yeah, it's, it's, out there. it's come down John? to execution in the fourth quarter. A lot of yeah. these games have come down to just them executing and not being able to come up with what they need to do. Big plays, big shots, whatever, mm -hmm. at the end of the More of my point, though, is that you've got a guy, guy like DeMar scoring 36, but you've got the three guys that you mentioned yeah. earlier, Brent, DeJounte, Derek, not yeah. stepping up. But Patty Mills is still out there. Rudy yeah. is still out there. Yeah. Patty Mills had, what, 25, 25. last night? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, you got to get you got to get two or three more guys to step up. But it's just it's I don't yeah maybe the, we'll go with that. Let's just say, it's <laughs> youth. When's the next game again? It's the youth problem tomorrow Wednesday. night. Wednesday tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. Yes. All right. Against yeah. the Utah Jazz. Mm -hmm. All right. Another so very Thursday we hope to have no soapboxing <laughs> and having a celebration of a win. <laughs> Inbound the ball, right? He's That's what you want. Going to need a bigger soapbox. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yep. All Thank right, you guys. Justin Horn, would you like to weigh in on any of this? Don't inbound it to the big guy. <laughs> Got it. I, I, I can't dribble. That is, that is true. That is accurate. Uh, good stuff. Thanks, guys. Uh, Doppler radar is showing you. We've got showers moving off to the east now in a way. But it was loud last night. It's a little thunder uh, right around 3 or 4 o'clock this morning. We got some pretty good heavy rain. Now, it didn't last for a long time, but uh, piled up to about the 35 hundredths of an inch at the airport. Uh, around four tenths in a lot of spots. It was a good number outside right now. The fog is starting to lift. So this is an improvement from what we were looking at earlier. 57 degrees right now at the airport. Dew point is at 55. We got light winds. It's a pretty good setup for some fog behind the rain. So that's why uh, visibility has been as low as it has been. Uh, but I think you'll see these numbers go up two miles at Randolph, two and a half miles in Braunfels, still down to a quarter of a mile in Castroville. And looking at some of the trans guide pictures, it does look better. This is 410 in Culebra. Looks like the visibility has improved uh, quite a bit there. So uh, hopefully uh, this number two around the airport will come up pretty soon. Visible satellite picture shows where that fog and low cloud deck is. We can see that lining up right along I-35. So if you're back out towards Bandera, Kerrville, or Lakey, you are seeing sun at this hour. But not the case. Uh, San Antonio to New Braunfels up to San Marcos. And this does stretch down to Pearsall and even the uh, Eagle Pass area this morning. The clouds associated with the rain are almost out of our area completely. 70 today, 70 in Hondo today. A little cooler in the hill country. We're going to start to see some cooler air invading us from the north and west with a, with a frontal boundary. But that's also going to pick up the winds. So it's going to be a gusty day, and we have wind advisories posted for our western counties, Valverde and Kinney counties, and that goes until 6 o'clock tonight, and that's because we can see some gusts up to 40 miles per hour with this front. And that also poses, uh, you know, a, a fire threat, although we, we got the rain, so we're probably okay there. But the wind advisories stretch from west Texas all the way up into uh, Texas Panhandle, and that's behind this storm system. That frontal boundary is still sitting out to our north and west, but it pushes through today and our wind gusts will pick up accordingly. So 20 mile per hour wind gusts, maybe higher than that, four or five o'clock, even into tonight. We'll see some pretty stout winds out of the north and west, and we'll have to see what that does with Mountain Cedar tomorrow. We're on the downside there for the Mountain Cedar season, but with the gusty northwesterly wind, that's always uh, an issue. Uh, future cast shows this system moves east, so by 5 o'clock today, we're doing just fine. Maybe a, a, a bit of a wraparound cloud cover. And then by 5 p.m. tomorrow, Still pretty nice. We're in between systems, but Thursday, here comes our next upper level low. Swings in, picks up the cloud cover, picks up the uh, shower activity, and I think we'll get some light showers on Thursday. It'll be pretty chilly, too. This is going to draw in some cooler air. Even into Friday, some chances of showers early and then clearing Friday afternoon. And for today, 70 the high, breezy, northwesterly winds 15 to 25. Tomorrow, 63 and sunny. The 52 Thursday, that's it. 40% chance of rain. Site chance Friday morning 
And we were hoping this the weekend would be cloud free, but it's looking more and more like we're going to get an increase in cloud cover both Saturday and Sunday, maybe some showers late on Sunday. Oh, look, but still okay for our big KSAT party. Yes, still looks okay. All right, good. Yep. Thank you, my friend. 950, 57 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9, and we'll be right back. Morning. Hey, guys. Coming up on live, Matt Bomer will be here. He's going to talk about his latest role in the series, The Sinner. We'll see you in a little bit on live. Coming up to Down the News at Noon, what started as a leisurely 5K turned into a bonding experience that would take one woman's family to new heights they never thought possible. How running became a family affair for one local woman and our latest new week, new you. Tomorrow, GMSA at 9, January National Donor Month, and this year, San Antonio man celebrating 25 years of being a blood donor. How many gallons he has donated to date and why he does it tomorrow right here at 9. And speaking of blood donations, a reminder, our KSAC Community Blood Drive is going on all week. You can stop by University Hospital at any point to donate. The donor room is open until 5 today, Thursday and Friday, until 7 tomorrow. For more information, just visit the community section of our website, ksat.com. Let's check out Trans Guide. Here's we're approaching the top of the hour on your Tuesday morning, 1604 at Kyle Seal Parkway. We have a stalled vehicle with the hazards on there at 35 at FM 725. And it looks like we've got an accident in the clearing stages. 35 area at Nogalitos, stalled vehicle 410 and Culebra. Overall, visibility is starting to improve, but still some stubborn fog out there. It's going to stick around another hour or so. We should eventually see sun this afternoon, kicking temperatures up close to 70, but it will be breezy, cooler tomorrow, and another chance of rain by Thursday. All right. Are you a fan of seven-layer dip? I love it. Me yeah. too. I love it. How about 70-layer dip? Even better. Bring right. some friends. Yeah. <laughs> In honor of the upcoming Super Bowl, the folks at Bush's uh, Beans decided to, quote unquote, reimagine a popular game day snack by creating the so called 70 layer dip wing. Just over a thousand pounds, people. It comprises 10 unique seven layer bean dip recipes stacked on top of each other. It was officially recognized as the largest layer dip by the Guinness Book of World Records last week. Somebody from Bush's said, We know the classic seven layer dip made with Bush's Beans, a fan favorite for game day snacking. Every year at this time, we see an Increase in searches for recipes. So this year, we wanted to put a real twist on the traditional dip and do something fun for our fans while showcasing the versatility of Bush's beans through a wide range of recipes, including and in, included rather in the 70 layer bean dip. All right, so here's what you got here. All right, starting okay. from the top down a veggie dip, a Cuban dip, a caprice dip, a loaded baked potato dip, a buffalo dip, a Mediterranean dip, a fiesta dip, a spicy dip, a barbecue dip, and a classic dip. And the recipes are available online, by the way. Ooh, the logistics of, of this involved, I mean, they had a team of people layering things out, you know, planting them on a dry erase board and everything. I didn't even know they sold all those kinds of dips. And here's uh, a little, beans. and I didn't either. Here's yeah. a little factoid for you. Yeah. Might have made the rock a little mad. Did you know that before they made this dip, Dwayne Johnson, the rock, held the world record for the largest dip. It was a 540 pound, seven layer dip back in 2017. Now they've defeated the rock's That's record. That's some trivia right there. Both dips were donated to charity, by the oh, way. Well, that's the good. rock's in this. Things thing. you didn't know, <laughs> you're welcome. News you can use.